When you say the name Evelyn Hudson Hill, you speak of a person of power and passion who gives her entire self to making sure the lives of children and their families are successful. She is inspirational and she can move mountains with her words and with her actions. So as I'm grateful to know Evelyn. I often will call her when I need a, a moment of prayer, a moment of encouragement, and a moment of inspiration. Evelyn Hudson Hill, phenomenal person. We should all try to inspire to be like Evelyn. Hey, uh, I'm Phil Crowling and it's my privilege to get to talk regarding uh, Dr. Evelyn Hill. Uh, Evelyn's been a great friend over the last three or four years. We started doing school assemblies together as she was a board president, KCK, and just the passion we both had uh, for life, for uh, uh, basketball especially, for the kids. We have so many things in common and we just have enjoyed uh, getting to share together. Uh, she's just a great speaker and more than that, all the things you can say, everybody knows in that way, I know her as a great friend. Well, really it is an honor for me to take this time to be able to share and just say how wonderful Dr. Hill is been to my life personally and also to what goes on in our community. I mean, this woman is amazing. I've seen her in action. I've been able to participate in a lot of the things that she has been doing here in our community. And I mean, I could go on for hours just to say about the wonderful things that um, she, who she is in her life and the things that I know that God has done in her life and that has really inspired me um, as a young woman growing up and learning and just uh, through experience. I, I want to be like her when I grow up. I really do. I know uh, Dr. Hill, I should always say professional, I can but uh, we were doing school assemblies together in the middle schools in Kansas City, Kansas. And I would watch her speak, and she would keep sixth, seventh, and eighth graders just spellbound, just listening to her. And, uh, and she would tell her story of those who invested in her lives and how she wanted to invest in others. And then I watched her go out and do that all across the city. She uh, is an author, she's a speaker, She's a community leader, organizing things, taking care of things. She served on the school board quite a while. More than that, uh, my turn tonight is introducing you, you to somebody that's my friend, Dr. Evelyn Hill. Dr. Hill, you come and share tonight. Dr. Lane, our superintendent, who's already been introduced, uh, our president of the board, Ms. Brenda Jones, our vice president, Irene Alvino. We also have Reverend Rick Barons and also um, Ms. Janie. Janie, that's right. Very good. We have Janie. Thank you. I had a brain freeze there for a second. We're very excited of being here on tonight, and thank you to each of you for coming here. And I am just um, awed with caring for kids. Uh, somebody had to care for me, and I'm, and I'm so grateful uh, that somebody did. I want to thank my sisters who came on tonight, Pam and Linda, and uh, the way that Pam's birthday. Okay, with me. We won't sing. Just happy birthday, Pam. There you go. Very good. And then Jay survived. He's my youngest son. He told me don't ever call him the baby boy in public. So he's my youngest son, and we're glad he's with us. He survived being my child. And he did graduate barely, but uh, we're glad somebody uh, somebody took him under their wings. And, because mine were clipped at that point, and uh, so I'm just real glad he made it. Uh, as you can tell, uh, it takes all of us. It, it takes every last one of us. I, I'm, I'm very 
excited about each and every one of you being here and the staff uh, at different schools and churches and all the different community groups. We are all village dwellers and we're making it happen for our children. Uh, at the age of 13, my mother died and uh, I felt a great need uh, for somebody to care for me. My dad was there, he worked several jobs uh, and uh, we ended up with a, a stepmom six months after uh, my mother died and uh, we won't get into that too much but uh, <laughs> we survived all of that and uh, we made it and uh, I'm just so grateful for uh, Miss Roseburg who uh, Miss Roseburg was uh, you know, you couldn't trust anybody over 30 when I was a teenager. You just can't do it, you know. They just think they're your boss and everything. So, so Ms. Roseburg took all this time out with me. She would call. She would, how are you girls doing? Fine. And, well, how are you doing in school? Fine. Well, give me more, Evelyn. I need more details. So I, I'm just grateful for Ms. Roseburg. Uh, she would travel with me. She was a part of our church congregation and her daughter had to share me going along on their trips and uh, the, the uh, church conventions were super boring but the drive down was wonderful with the Roseburg. So I kept going and they kept me in line and, I, and so it, it all worked out. And even now, I love Miss Roseburg. You know why? Because she still calls me a girl. How are you girls doing? Oh, you're doing fine. So, wonderful that uh, she's even allowed. She tried, we tried to get her here tonight. She just couldn't make it and uh, so we'll keep her in, in our prayers. So let's continue to pray for the folks down south that have been through all the flooding. Let's, let's, let's keep praying. Those, do you know for every family that's a bunch of kids too? I saw kids in the boats and so those are some of our kids too. So we we're just villagers everywhere. So, so we want to keep going. We want to keep praying. So there are two types of champions. I'm not going to be very long. There's two types. There's uh, the now champion, noun, which is a person who has defeated, surpassed all rivals in competition. And there's also the other uh, champion. And that champion is the one who has persevered and has uh, made uh, their way to be an expert in their field, uh, especially in sports. And so when I think about those two types of champions, I think of Miss Monet Davis, who at the age of 13 made uh, part of the Mid-Atlantic champions from Philadelphia, who kicked off the Little League World Series tournament. And Ms. Monet was 13 years old, the first female, and she had a fast pitch of 70 miles an hour. So I would say to her, you go, girl. And then I think the little seven-year-old, Charlie Simpson, who when he heard about UNICF's project to help the children and the families in Haiti, he decided to get on his bicycle and go across the street and raise money. His goal was to raise at least $500 and he'd do five miles on his, on his little bicycle to raise money. That young man ended up raising over $240,000 for the families in Haiti. Now, is that a serious or what? One day when I grow up, I want to be a champion like Charlie. But champions come in many shapes, forms, fashions. They're not limited to age. They're not limited to ethnicities. All it takes is a heart. That's all it takes. So we talked about champions and, oh, by the way, the word heart is mentioned in the Bible over 300 times. So it's a pretty important word. And let me tell you the three things that according to uh, Champions for Kids, which is an organization out of Arkansas, what they said kids need, at least three things. Someone who cares, a place to belong, and hope for tomorrow. Wow! Someone who cares, a place to belong, and hope for tomorrow. 
So when I think about my own personal journey, I'm so glad for those who care. Uh, my sisters, Lord bless them, I don't know if they cared that much or not at the time. I think they do now, they love me now. But they used to tell me all the time, you're not my mama. Well, mama had told me, you the oldest. You keep them girls in line. And so Linda's birthday is in January. She came up with the right idea. She must be the oldest because January is first month. And so, you remember that? Never mind, Linda. Care. Even after mama died, my dad made sure we were in a safe place. He was somebody that cared. He was he was there for us. And even when he even when mom was sick and her health was deteriorating, he made sure that she had everything she needed. He even hired a lady to come in and, and help with some of the chores around the house, which amen to that. And uh, so that was less for me, because usually I had to take the blunt of that. But I'm so thankful for my dad being there and then uh, for Miss Roseburg being there. We had some place to be, a place. And when I read the statistics that over 100 million kids worldwide don't have any place to stay, homeless, that just blows me away. So, like I said, champions come in all forms. And, and so when you think about someone who cares, I, I thought about one particular family, Mr. Hoyt, H-O-Y-T. And you may have heard about him. He had this son who was born with mental disabilities. And at, the, at that point, he, he uh, found out that the child had been choked by the umbilical cord. When, the child was born, and so he's going to be disabled for the rest of his life. So one particular day, uh, the young boy uh, went to school. They found out he could communicate. They, they put, rigged the computer and got it going to where he could pick out what he wanted to say and do and ended up going to school. And he discovered that one of the players on the football team or one of the players in a particular sport was paralyzed. And so he picked out to his dad. Dad, I would like to do something for this boy. He wanted to participate in the fundraising activities. So his dad said, well, okay, well, we'll do it. And so his dad began at that particular point to, to uh, begin that fundraiser with his son, but then he took it a whole lot further. He started doing triathlons and doing all kinds of races around the country, and he would do whatever it took. He put his son on the front of the bike and ride for miles, and that was an event. Or he used a wheelchair to do it, and that was an event. Or in a swimming match. And so people would say to this, to this dad, man, you, you really are his champion. He said, no, my kid saved my life. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, a doctor had told uh, uh, the dad, his name was Dick, he said, hey, uh, if it wasn't for you being in such great shape, you would have died 15 years ago because you got your arteries are 95% clogged. So he tells everybody his son saved his life, but he saved his son's life. His, his son packed out, Dad, I don't even feel like I'm disabled anymore because he's out on the treadmill. He's out in all the different races. Wow, champions. Whew. A place to belong. I felt like, right after my mother died, so glad I got some place to belong. Everybody in our family, after my mother died, several of them wanted to. This one wanted uh, the younger siblings. Of course, I was old, so nobody wanted me. I don't take it personal or anything like that, but <laughs> I'm just glad my dad and mom had figured out when, when she leaves, don't separate the kids. Keep those girls together. Provide for them a place to belong. So not only did I belong at home, I belonged at church, and I belonged at school. Miss Norfleet, who was a white lady, she was a counselor with the big poof hair. Y'all don't know nothing about that. She had the big poof hair, and she was from Texas. She had this really mean Texas accent. She was wonderful. 
I told her I can't live in that house anymore. My stepmother is abusive. I, I can't, I just can't live there anymore. Please put me in a girl's home. And she said, Evelyn, I'm not going to put you in a girl's home. She said, if I tell you what, you keep those grades up. And I will help you go to any college in the United States you want to go to. Miss Starfleet with the Pooh Fair. <laughs> I said, really? She said, yes, you just stay in school, you keep those grades up. So I graduated one of the top 25 uh, from Lincoln High School on the Missouri side back in the day. I'm not going to tell you that year, but back in the day and ended up in North Carolina. It was a long way from Kansas City. I want to get a long ways from here. So I went to North Carolina to school, but it took Miss Norfleet's help to get me there. Every child needs someone who cares. Every child needs a place to belong. And every child needs hope for tomorrow. Hope. So hope to me is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just bread by itself is no good, but put some peanut butter and jelly. Jelly is sweet, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Then it all sticks together. That's what hope does. It keeps you together. I, I did a little research on hope, and do you realize that when you have hope, when you're encouraged, when you're inspired, it releases those endorphins, that chemical stuff, in your brain, and then you automatically get this happy feeling just because of hope. And if we can give that to kids, if we can give kids hope, man, we've done something. We have 23,000 kids in the KCK School District, 87 to 90 percent on low or reduced, free or reduced lunch. So it's a high poverty area. If we can give them hope, if we can make them smile, if we can give them a high five, man, that says a whole lot. Right. Then that gives them a reason to go in and do that, man. Because I can help them. Hope. If we can give kids hope again, if we can just inspire them, you can do it. And there's a little little uh, girl who uh, goes to the, one, of, one of our schools and she comes to where I work on a regular basis and she's kind of chubby and the kids make fun of her. But she has a smile that'll light up the world. And so what I tell her every time I see her is, Woo! Girl, you got a beautiful smile. And boy, all 32, all of them. But if I can inspire her to keep up the good work, to keep smiling, to don't quit, man, we've done something. And that's what each and every one of you do. You give hope. What the world needs now is IHOP. Not International House of Pancakes. Not International House of Prayer, but individual hope from other people. Aha! Individual hope from other people. As much as Miss Roseburg was all in my business, she gave me hope. She cared. She said, Emma, what do you want to do when you grow up? Get married. Well, why do you want to get married? You got your whole life to get married. I go, what does this old woman want from me? <laughs> but she was absolutely right. I had my whole life, I had college, and I did end up going to college, and, and as, as I shared earlier, and did some great things later on in life. But man, hope. It took somebody that cared. She and Miss Northley, Miss Connors was my second grade teacher. And Miss Connors and I were the same height. So she had a deficiency. <laughs> but Miss Connors took time to help me to read. I struggled so. And Jay, I probably didn't tell you this. Jay had a few issues. I'm not telling all your business. That's my son. <laughs> And we got him a tutor because his mother couldn't do it. We got him a tutor and he did excellent. She was young, she was cute, and uh, he was ready to learn. <laughs> did that good. Miss <laughs> Connor was the bomb. She would take me off to the side and use flash 
cards to help me to read. By the time I was in the eighth grade, that was second grade, by the time I was in the eighth grade, I was on the honor roll and stayed on the honor roll throughout school. Just because she gave me hope. I thought, man, am I going to ever be able to read? Man, she gave me great hope. So, this man gave me great hope, which was Jesus Christ. Blows me away. Him and his relationship with kids. But you got to read between the lines to get lines to get the real blunt of the story. So here is Jesus, and he's been doing this normal thing. You know, he heals people and he encourages and walks the street. He's not stuck in buildings or anything like that. And here he is. And so the disciples are messing up. It's so all these kids, they're trying to get to Jesus. They're trying to get to Jesus. And the disciples are rebuking the kids and no, you stay away. No, you go back to your mama. Who is this child? Get somebody, get this little one right here. <laughs> and so Jesus sees this and Jesus rebukes not the kids, the disciples. And you know what he tells them? He says, I tell you what, you have those kids come to me. And when, he, when the kids come to Jesus, this is what he does. The scripture said he embraced them. And he put his hand on their head. Wow. Jesus cared for kids. So much so that he didn't mind touching them. So as we leave today, I want to encourage you to touch a kid. <laughs> Don't just look at him. <laughs> Touch him. <laughs> so another incident with Jesus and kids, this just blows me away. The first miracle Jesus did, a lot of people like, he turned water into wine. But the second miracle was he healed a little boy. A dad had traveled 40 miles. Bible calls him a noble. <laughs> had traveled 40 miles to see Jesus. And he came with one thing in mind, to get help for his son. And so he gets to Jesus and he says, hey, I'll, do you mind coming back? Excuse my urban language. I'm sure Jesus didn't talk like I did. <laughs> but he said, would you come to my home? and heal my son. And Jesus just gave him a word. He says, your son is healed. And so the man starts back home. I, I guess he was probably a little disappointed. He was hoping, well, since I'm a nobleman, maybe Jesus would take a moment. He's, he's known for being one of kindness and mercy and gentleness. Maybe he will come to my home. But no, Jesus didn't come. But he, he sent his word. And so, when the guy gets halfway home, one of the servants meet him halfway and says, you know what? Your son is healed. He goes, well, now what time did that happen? And so, the servant gives him about the same time that he knows that Jesus had said, your son is healed. So, what am I saying? Once you touch him, you put your hands on them, give them a good word. Heal with a word. Then the third time, Jairus is looking for help for his daughter. Oh my gosh, it's, it's busy. I mean, it's thousands, it's multitudes around Jesus. Everybody is trying to get to Jesus. All of a sudden, Jairus comes and he's, he's, he's asking Jesus, please, I need you to heal my daughter. I, I, I just want you to heal my daughter. Well, in the meantime, Jesus is interrupted because the woman with the issue of blood then touched his garment and now she's made whole and he's turned around. Who touched me? Who touched me? And so if I was your I was going to stay focused, Jesus. Stay focused here, right? <laughs> Being made whole, he's telling 
killing the woman, you know, because of your faith, you, you, you've been whole, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and now it's Jairus' turn. And Jesus goes home with him. And when he gets there, the people are crying, they're so upset because the little girl has died. But Jesus tells Jairus, don't worry about it. She's only sleeping. Well, if it had been anybody else, I would have not believed Jesus. But since it's Jesus, okay, she's sleeping. And so in a minute, he goes into the house and raises up this little girl. Wow. How many times has someone raised you up just with the word? Just because you took the time to go out of your way to be with that person. That's care. It blows me away that we, we have this opportunity right now for all the mistakes I've made as a mom. I've been trying to make it up to my grandkids and everybody else's kids. <laughs> all of them. Don't matter to me. Blue, red, green, all of them. One, two little girls come to the job, and when they see me, they say, Dr. Hill, and they run, and I go, in the name of Jesus, and then because I got to pick them up and hug them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. We inspire, encourage, hope. Yes, you can make it. Oh, I know. Life happens, but still you can make it. And for everybody in the school district, and everybody in churches and communities and businesses that's trying to make it, that's trying to make a difference for kids, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. Wow, it's awesome. And she said, dream big. What if every child had a champion? You, you heard about a few of mine. There were, there were many more. But what if every child had a champion? Woo! Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And then if, if we can make it nationwide. I think in the state of Kansas, it's, I forget how many million kids in the state, just the state, we can start with the state. Notice I didn't limit it to the metropolitan area. That every child have a champion. So, I'm going to close with these words. I want you to always remember I hop. Internal hope. Internal hope from other people. You be the other people that gives hope. And thank you, because you're already doing it. That's why you're here. <laughs> you are the people that's given hope. And our job is to get more and more and more people to give hope. All right, they give me the finger. So <laughs> I think that means it's time to stop. God bless you. Be encouraged. Have a great year. I'd like to just say something about Dr. Evelyn Hill. Uh, she's an awesome speaker. Uh, she speaks one of hope. She talks a lot about how she was raised uh, with her mother dying at an early age. But also, she inspired hope by talking about IHOP, internal hope from other people. And so she talked to people tonight and she connects with whether she's talking to children or educators, young and old. She has this prolific way of, of communicating and motivating and inspiring you to do something you would normally do. So I believe Dr. Evelyn Hill is truly a champion, not only as a professional speaker and a motivational speaker, but also as a person because she actually lives the life she talks about. 
and uh, she, her life is an example. So it's not just a matter of her being an excellent speaker, but it also has a lot to do with her life and what she does for others. Thank you, Dr. Eve Evelyn Hill, for being such an inspiration in my life. Yes, I'm Pastor Charles Cofield, and I'm just happy that I can speak about my good friend, Dr. Uh, Hill. Uh, Dr. Hill is a, a, a beautiful person. She's a very positive person, and uh, uh, she's one that carries the word of the Lord uh, down inside of her, but she doesn't mind expressing that word to others. And many have been blessed uh, by her ministry, and many of them have been blessed by her uh, working within uh, the city, uh, within the school district, and other uh, other areas and so I just want to say that I appreciate her and the role model that she is and uh, the number of people that uh, lives that she have touched and I pray that she will continue to make a difference in the lives of those that she come in contact with. And I'm Carolyn and uh, Dr. Hill is definitely my sister girlfriend. I appreciate her so much. I love when she tells her story. Everyone has a story and all stories don't have a happy ending. But I'm so glad to see what God is doing in her life and what uh, he's going to continue to do. I just appreciate her sense of humor. I, I was listening to her tonight thinking about a little bit of sugar, a little honey makes the medicine go down. Yes, she may have uh, us laughing a little bit, but deep down inside, I know that she is serious about what she's doing, uh, that God is using her. Uh, she's salt and light in the marketplace, and I appreciate her and all that she does for the glory of God. Hey, hello, my name is Evelyn Hill, Dr. Evelyn Hill. Just enjoyed a wonderful banquet with Caring for Kids. I was a keynote speaker, and the uh, title on tonight was The Heart of a Champion. And man, what a wonderful evening it has been. Uh, you can see some of the people are leaving now, but uh, man, it was a, a packed crowd, and uh, we just um, encouraged each and every one to give hope back to kids, to touch them, give them a word of encouragement, take the opportunity to love on a kid. Um, my mother died when I was 13, and different ones rallied around me to make sure my sisters and myself were okay. So. Um, as you go throughout your day and the rest of this year, take time out to care for a kid. God bless you and have a great year. Bye.